Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about updating a forked repository. Uh, this was a question that was asked on my stream recently. Uh, so let me just show you what they mean there. Okay, so uh, this is pyCQA slash pyflakes, which is a linter that I am one of the maintainers of. Um, however, the Git workflow that I use, even when I'm contributing to stuff that I maintain for the most part, is I will fork the repository and work inside my fork. So you'll see if we go to acetilly slash pyflakes uh, that I have a fork here from pyCQA pyflakes. Uh, but you'll also notice that my fork is a little bit out of date. And some people like to keep this up to date. I don't really care about it because I don't, I don't usually do development from my fork's main branch. I usually you know, still branch off of the upstream's main branch. Uh, but you can see here that mine is from December 7th of 2020, uh, which is a little bit out of date from the latest version. Uh, so I'm gonna show you here, if you've cloned, uh, you know, your fork, how you would go about updating it. So let's start by cloning our fork. Git and github.com colon acetilly slash pyflakes. Uh, now I'll actually show you how I usually do my workflow. Um, this, is, this is gonna be assuming that you've cloned your fork. Um, but I'll show you what I usually do after that. So if we CD into PyFlakes, uh, you'll see that if I do git log, it is again still this December 7th really, really old commit. Um, and if I do git remote dash V, you'll see that I have a single remote set up against my fork of this repository. Uh, but if I now go and add another remote, so we're gonna add a remote for the upstream. So we're gonna git remote add upstream. And that's going to be the GitHub URL of the upstream, git at github.com pyCQA slash pyflakes. So that gets us our upstream there. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fetch that upstream. That way locally I can reference any of the branches or commits from it. So we can do git fetch upstream. Uh, and you'll see that it says, you know, and two new tags were created and, you know, master was updated to the latest in upstream master. Um, from this, I can now update my version of master on my local machine. So I can do, let's do git branch, make sure we're on master. I can then do git pull upstream master, or I can just do git merge. We actually did the fetch already. So pull is, pull is fetch and then merge. So we already did the fetch. So we can just do git merge upstream slash master. And um, I like to do FF only. I actually plan to do a video about this later, but this basically means that we're only going forward in history we're not doing any merge commits here. So we're just we're just moving from one position in the branch to another position. Uh, and so you can see after this, we have now updated our local copy to be up to date with the upstream. And then after that, what you can do is if you wanna push this back to your fork, you can git push origin head. So origin is my fork. If we look at git remote dash, dash v, You'll see that origin is my remote and upstream is you know the upstream. So if we do git push origin head, you will see now that uh, my fork has been updated. It is no longer eight commits behind. It is now even with the upstream. And so this is how you would update that. Now I usually don't bother with with updating my master branch or my main branch. What I usually do when I work on stuff. So let's actually delete pyflakes. What I usually do is I clone the um, base repository, so not the one that I forked from. So I clone pyCQA slash pyflakes. Um, and then what I do is I do git remote add acetilly or, you know, mine or whatever, whatever your username is. It doesn't have to be your username. It can be literally anything you want. Um, but then I add my fork as a another repository here. So git remote add that. And then if we fetch acetilly, you'll see that all of my branches are here. So we can you know, check out the silly match statement branch if, or, or whatever. Um, and so then if I want to check out a new branch from the upstream, I don't have to update my upstream. I can just do git checkout origin slash master dash b new branch or whatever. And this will use the most updated version from the repository that we forked from. So you'll see here, that's again, the same two, three, one. Although <laughs> we updated my master. So I don't know, maybe should have done that in a different order. Uh, but that's, you know, this is the this is the setup that I usually use for mine. So I'll have my name here and I'll have my origin here. I actually have a special um, I actually have a special uh, little git alias that does this for me. So if I do git GitHub fork GitHub fork, um, this both forks the repository and sets up the remotes for me automatically. Um, and if you want that, it is on my 
GitHub in the Scratch repository in the Python directory. It is this git GitHub fork here. So it basically, you know, it makes a fork on GitHub and then it sets up these remotes how I like to do them. But anyway, hopefully that was interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.